Now, before the video starts, I'd just like to say a big thank you for all the support lately. We recently broke the 200 subscriber barrier. Might not sound a lot to some people, but it's a big benchmark for me, so thank you very much for that. Now, if you are subscribed, don't forget to whack the notification button. Uploads have been slow of late, and I do apologise for that. I'm hoping to start getting a better routine, mixing, streaming and uploads. Regarding streaming, come join me on my Twitch channel. Links will be in the description. So come along to a stream and have a jolly good laugh with me. Also, don't forget to join my Discord server. Come along to that. Links will be in the description below. Come along, have a good old chat with some good people. And lastly, follow me on Twitter and Patreon. I am hoping to start the old vlog soon. And to start with, these will probably be exclusive to Patreon and Twitter followers. So come along and follow. And thank you very much for me. Hey, hello, ladies and chaps, and a jolly good welcome to you. I am Curtier. Thank you very, very much for joining me for this video, Curtier's top tips for a successful cold waters mission. Now, many of you probably know about these little tricks already, so I apologize if I'm teaching you to suck eggs or whatever, but um, I'm doing this video because I'm sure a lot of mistakes are still made, and here are some of the little tactics and strategies I think are important for a successful mission in cold waters. Now, the first two tips are just purely preliminary and they are things that I like to do to make my time playing Cold Waters all the more comfortable and easier. Namely, rations. Make sure you have a good cup of tea or something nearby and maybe some nibbly bits to see you through the battle. I myself have my steward bring me a nice cup of tea and a plate of biscuits to see me on my way in a mission. So wife, tea please. Charming. Secondly, preparation. I myself like to have a small notepad and pen on my desk ready for when I'm going into cold waters. I will write down important mission points, for example, how long I've got until the enemy ships might set sail, where they're going to, how many there might be, their type, if it's known via reconnaissance, whether they're boomers or diesel electric or whatever. The most important thing I tend to write down is the bearing for Sierra 1 when contact is made with the enemy because within about 10 seconds of the battle starting I've actually forgotten normally where Sierra 1 was when it was detected and if it's not showing up on the map then I tend to lose them and spend a bloody long time trying to find the bastards so have a notepad and pen write down important little details here and there number three use the crew now by this point you should be in the battle in the mission made contact with the enemy and you're trying to manoeuvre into a attack position. Now whilst manoeuvring, whilst not actually in combat, I tend to use the crew. I'll set a bearing, I'll set a depth, and I'll let the crew get me on that bearing or depth, because when you use that feature of the game, they tend to use the finer adjustments. Whereas if you set ballast yourself, it's an increments of five, for example. So allowing the, the crew AI to do it for you, I find is subtler movements, it's not so sudden, and you can correct it easier as well if you tend to go a bit further than what you want to be. Uh, and you can let them do that while you're looking at the map and that kind of thing. You can do other things, preparing yourself whilst your AI crew are getting you to where you want to be. Number four, don't be a stingy bastard on the ammunition. Now, when you have gotten yourself into a good position to attack, whether you're up against submarines or warships, as I said at the start, don't be stingy firing your ammunition. Don't fire one torpedo and hope it hits. Use spreads. If you can't be certain of an absolute kill in a one shot, use two or even three torpedoes to kill a ship or a submarine, especially if you know their capabilities and you know that they are potentially manoeuvrable, high-tech sensors and they will see the torpedoes coming. As I said, fire two or even three if you have to. This will give them lots to think about and even if they miss, you might be lucky and have one of the torpedoes you fired home in on another enemy perhaps if the enemy are closely bunched together. This might also count in the opening barrage of the game. I tend to shoot almost every tube I have when I'm engaging multiple surface ships. My opening shots against a group of surface combatants, I fire everything. I shoot the lot and duck and dive away quickly. Once I go weapons hot, you not so much need to be as quiet until you've cleared the initial engagement and then you get yourself back into a quiet area again and then plan your follow-up attack. Because it tends to be Whilst the enemy ships are dodging torpedoes, they don't tend to worry about shooting back at you. They're more worried about not having their ass blown off by your torpedoes. Naturally, if ammunition is a problem, then don't do this. You have to ration your shots. But if you have a full load and you're on your first couple of missions, have fun 
and just let fly with the torpedoes. Tip number five, advanced torpedo tactics. Now then, this is a real life tactic, I believe. When you do shoot individual torpedoes, don't shoot them straight at the enemy, if you can avoid it. If you've not been detected and you're still unheard or unseen by the enemy, shoot away from the enemy first or at an angle and then using the wire, if you still have the wire attached of course, turn the torpedo in later because the enemy are likely to fire a torpedo along the bearing in which your torpedo is coming from and if your torpedo is coming from a completely different bearing to where you are, you should be safe from this torpedo. It works very well against surface ships but it should also work against submarines. So shoot away and then turn the torpedo in. Tip number six, evasive maneuvers. Now then, this is obviously your own preference, but I do strongly advise that you find maneuvers that work for you and you stick to them. For example, some people will throw out a noisemaker and then maneuver. Some won't even do that. They'll just hold their breath and hope the enemy torpedoes don't detect them. It doesn't often work. My maneuvers are quite extreme. This is where I will get hands on the controls more and I tend to use upwards and downwards spirals. So for example, I will start to spiral in a circle upwards towards the surface and if there is a, a layer or a duct, get yourself above the layer, so the layer is between you and any incoming torpedoes. And then as the torpedoes continue to close on you, if they do, you do the reverse and go back down below the layer and the duct. Of course, this only works if you have maneuvering space to perform such maneuvers. Otherwise, it's just a matter of just left and right movements trying to shake the torpedo throwing out noisemakers as you go. But there is a very extreme maneuver, and I mean extreme because it is a last resort. If you have fired off a noisemaker and a torpedo is still closing in as an emergency, you could use the emergency blow tactic where you basically point your nose towards the surface, engines at full and blow your, ba blow your ballast and just get carried up. Hopefully you'll be carried up fast enough that the torpedo will go underneath you. And once you reach the surface, Hopefully the surface is so noisy the torpedo will leave you alone, but not always the case. It's often a one-use tactic, um, but at least it might buy you time to reload a noisemaker. Naturally, you don't really want to do this when enemy warships are about. It doesn't end well. Tip number seven, use the terrain. As anyone who plays calls will know, a lot of it is down to chance, luck, and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes you're in shallow water, sometimes you're in deep water. Naturally, in the open world map, you do have some say in this. If you're near the coast, you're likely to be in shallow water, naturally. However, sometimes there's a duct or a, a layer, sometimes there isn't. Use this though, when you have it. No matter how strong or weak it might be, use it. If you're against surface ships, try and stay below the layer or the duct. If you're against submarines, try and keep the layer between you and they, or if you've got torpedoes coming at you, again, try and put the layer between you and the torpedoes. Furthermore, and I know this is a tactic used by many, use sunken ships and vessels to get rid of torpedoes. If you have torpedoes chasing you and you can't shake them off, try and lure them away as best you can as close to a sunken ship that you may have already destroyed. These emit a lot of noise and will often attract the torpedo to it, thus saving you. If not, just try and park over the other side of it and hope the torpedo smashed into it rather than come straight for you. This also works with living ships too. I have more than once lured enemy torpedoes straight towards one of their allied vessels, which was making a lot more noise than I was, thus luring away the torpedo and sinking said ship. It was glorious, I tell you. Glorious. Of course, use ambient noise too. If you can get towards the surface, and not break the surface, and try to run quiet, a homing torpedo might have more difficulty finding you. Naturally, this might put you in more danger with any nearby enemy warships, but at least the immediate threat might be eliminated. I do believe that in cold waters and in submarine warfare, it's the short-term victories in an engagement that will see you through the day. Tip number eight, know what you're up against. When you have detected an enemy vessel and you have acquired what it is, make sure you look at the information available in the top right hand corner in the little tab that you can pull out, showing you the ships and their capabilities and their weapon systems. This will help you come up with a plan of attack 
if they have long range missiles or long range rocket propelled depth charges or torpedoes or they have very good sensors you know to be careful be as quiet as you can not to make any sudden movements on the other hand if you see in the information tab that it is a noisy vessel with poor sensors and poor weaponry you know you could be a bit more brutal with your actions on top of this, it is possible to sneak up on any vessel in Codwaters if you can get into their baffles. Not always an easy thing to achieve, but if you can, then get your sorts off early, because obviously the gap between you and they may open up, they can turn at any point and re reacquire you, redetect you or whatever. So get into their baffles, shoot your torpedoes at them, and hopefully they won't hear the torpedoes coming, until the last moments at least. Tip number nine, know your own vessel. Now. With Cold Waters, and particularly with the new playable subs and more mod, which I like to play, there are dozens of submarines you can use. If you have one that you like, learn how to use it, learn its good points and its bad points. For example, I am a big fan of the Oberon class diesel electric attack submarine. Now, this thing isn't particularly fast, or manoeuvrable for that matter, but it's deadly quiet, and I use that as an advantage. Most enemy ships and submarines can outrun the Oberon class, however, they often can't hear you coming first. So I'd like to get in nice and close, under the radar, under the sonar, without being heard or seen, and attack with all available force, as I described earlier, and then make a quick exit before the enemy realise what's hit them. Now if the submarine you wish to use is good at high speeds, use it to your advantage. It might not be as quiet, but at high speeds you might be able to outrun torpedoes, outrun enemy vessels, or catch enemy vessels for that matter. This also goes with depth, maximum depth. Know your submarine's maximum depth. Try not to go below this, it doesn't end well often, but use this to your advantage too. If your submarine can go very deep, use it. And finally, the last tip for the day, plan your missions. When you engage your enemy, use reconnaissance first, use the scopes at long distance. See what's about, see what the enemy are doing, see what formation they're sailing in. Or if you're up against submarines, patience, listen, wait. Try to block the enemy's path, or try to come at from the rear where you'll be hidden in their baffles. When preparing to fire, plan how many torpedoes do you wish to use? How do you want them to shoot? What bearing do you want them to shoot at? Are you going to use my tactic of shooting them off another angle to bring them in? This can be quite difficult when firing multiple torpedoes, but it's not impossible. You just have to be on top of what you're doing and keep an eye on the map. Use the map, it's a very, very good tool. As I said, plan everything you do. Plan ahead, plan 10 steps ahead if you can. Find out what you're up against, find out what it's good at, what it's bad at, and use it against them. And also, be daring. Don't be afraid to get in amongst the enemy. Don't be afraid to put yourself in danger. Don't be afraid of getting shot at either. Just make sure you leave yourself an escape route and plan ahead all the time. Now, as I explained, for some people, this is all second nature. They probably do this in their sleep whilst playing Cold Waters. But sometimes it takes putting pen to paper to really realise what you're doing wrong and what you're doing well. So thank you all very, very much for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. Tell me what your tactics are. I'm hoping to do more of these style videos, hopefully using your tactics too. How do you overcome submarines and how do you overcome surface ships? How do you carry out missile attacks and so on? These are all videos yet to come from me in my Gautier's top tips for cold waters. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Patreon, and Twitch, because I'm hoping to start streaming Cold Waters soon, a lot more than what they have been, and I could definitely use your help with that. So thank you all very, very much for watching. I am Curtier. hope you have a very nice day, and I hope to see you all again very, very soon. Goodbye.